Hi, this is Anita from the Global Trade Gal. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about trends. No matter what industry you're in, you need to think about the trends of the industry. I was thinking back today about how, you know, any of us that are a bit older, we remember the time when the VHS came out or the videos came out. And then next came the DVDs and the Blu-rays. And today almost everybody's streaming off of their TV. In fact, I have a DVD player, which is somewhere in my house, which I haven't connected, and I haven't connected for a long time because I simply do not watch DVDs anymore, and I don't even know whether I have a video player. I think I have one somewhere, but I haven't watched any videos for a long time. Why? Because I can simply just stream the things down onto the TV. So in any industry you're in, trends is something that you need to look at. And you might think, well, trends have not much to do with me. But the truth is that trends and the way the world changes is something that anyone who's in the global trade needs to be able to look at and to be able to look at the trends. As I don't um, know much about trends in other industries, though I see the trends and I see changes. I know, um, you know, fashion, for example, is an industry which changes all the time. That if you're in shoes, you're in garments, you're in some type of what they consider the fashion industry, your trends are going to be constantly changing and you as a company need to keep up with your trends or keep up with the things that your customers want to see. If you don't, then your chances are people will just stop buying from you and you'll no longer become relevant. A great example of that, which I've talked about before in this podcast and I've written some blogs on, has been you know about what happened between Blockbusters and Netflix, where Blockbusters had the opportunity to be able to you know say that, look, we're going to get into the streaming industry. We're going to um, you know, look at the DVDs. You know, People aren't going to want to come anymore and pick out their own videos and they totally missed the chance and today you know Netflix of course is a much bigger company and Blockbusters is is pretty much out of business I think there's only like one store left in the United States somewhere in some random part out west in the in the United States so you know that again is an example of why a company or you know people need to look at trends and understand what the trends are in a lot of the fashion industries, in, in, in particular like my industry in home decor, trends are what I would call even cyclo. They go around a little bit in a circle, but all the time with a new twist. Like before, a couple of years ago, you know, all the rage was about the 80s, you know, the 70, 60s resurgence and then the 70s resurgence. And now there's many people talking about the 80s and how the 80s is starting to come back again. And they're starting to cycle around and around and around. You know, so I want to talk a little bit about, you know, this sort of revival or this retro revival, because maybe some of you that are out there, this can help you understand some things to be able to look for in, in trends for your own industry itself if you are not in the home decor industry. I remember quite well the, the 80s. I remember in our industry, there was a brand that I worked quite a bit on, which is called Bob Timberlake. And Bob Timberlake kind of had the, it was sort of the all-American decor type of brand. It was about, um, you know, embracing the lived in, the distressed look. Um, there were a lot of things with flowers and birds. Bob Timberlake, by the way, if you get a chance, is a great artist. He's kind of an all-American artist, but he really, you know, during this period of time, the 80s and the 90s, set a lot of this trend for this sort of like this, uh, um, you know, Americana look that was going on in, in a place like the United States. It was sort of like all about comfort. It was about nostalgia. We did like, you know, turned woods out of, like out of turned wood lamps. We, um, you know, painted things that had scenes on it that were um, you know, like of a cabin out in the woods. Uh, flowers and and other things like that. They were all sort of popular at the time, and he was a very popular name um, during this period of time. Also in the 80s, we saw things that were more bold colors and curvy shapes, and today we're seeing in the home decor at least a lot of curvy um, types of shapes and a lot of bold colors coming out. Uh, several of the paint companies, they made their, their paint color for 2024 was a bay blue, which is sort of like, I, I guess the best way I could say is sort of a Norwegian blue. It's kind of a little bit of a nostalgia. At the same time, it's a brighter color. 
If you look at what Pantone picked as their color of the year, and I've done a podcast on this too, was was the fuzzy peach, sort of a bit of a brighter, a brighter color going on here. So you can see sort of like this brightness, you know, starting to come in. There was a lot of sort of like florals and natural motifs coming in that they were not only about bold colors, but it was sort of like this floral, this sort of natural motifs. There was, you know, these sort of tropical plants coming in. There were things made out of tropical plants. There was, you know, monkeys and other things that were onto, you know, onto the artwork, which we see now starting to come back. This whole sort of look with wallpaper, you see coming back into many of the homes where people have wallpaper that sort of has that look to it, or they have like one, you know, one big statement wall in their house that has sort of like this wall has a statement to it, which may have those uh, motifs. So that goes into like more like tropical and animal prints. You know, somebody else that was really big during this era was Laurel Ashley. Laurel Ashley with all of her, you know, very sort of intricate sort of floral prints that were sort of, um, you know, very much during this sort of this 80s period of this 80s time you know, she was also extremely popular. I believe, you know, if you look today in fashion, you see things that are coming back, things coming back on the runway. You see some of these florals coming back. You see some of these, you know, type of uh, shins prints that, you know, we used to call them, you know, I'm starting to come back more. And that will, of course, all trinkle its way down into all types of industries. We'll be looking at the same type of thing or using the same type of trim, um, prints and motifs. You know, the 80s was also a time when the world was changing. You know, the 1980s was an era where the internet was starting to come in. Computers were coming in big. The internet was, you know, starting to take over our lives. In fact, you know, I think it was mid-1980s where the internet really came in. And I really think one of the reasons why this trend is happening, you know, coming back again today is, Right now, we have another change that's taking place in a huge way. Where the 1980s had the internet, which changed everything. Today, in you know the era of 2024, we have AI, and so we sort of have the you know both of these eras sort of have this change taking place. Where you know the 80s, because that change was taking place, people you know they became more adventurous of their mixtures and textures. Uh, people could get onto the internet, learn more about the world, so they began to explore a little bit more about the world and bring that into their own home. Today, we have this other change coming where AI is changing our world, how we maybe interact with our electronic devices, how we interact with each other, how we interact with life itself is changing as AI starts to change us and to change the world. So I think that's another reason why, because of all these technological influences that in the 80s where the internet came in and influenced it, today we have another huge technological influence, which is influencing our world and changing our world as we know it. I've um, written a, a blog post on this and shown you some of the things of the 80s if you'd like to be able to learn more about that. But I think it's really important for anyone who's in the global trade industry to understand that trends are going to change. And so no matter what type of product you are buying and selling, you need to be aware of what the trend is. You need to always be on top of the trends. I don't care if you're selling widgets. I don't care if you're selling you know, straws for someone to drink out of, if you're selling home decor, if you're selling baby items, whatever it is that you are buying or selling, you need to be on top of the trends and understand what is happening with the trends because the trends are going to happen and it's going to change and it's going to it the world is just going to continue to change and evolve in our description i'm going to put a link to our blog post which is called embracing the past the resurgence of 80s trends in home decor and furniture if any of you are interested to read it and to learn more about it we invite you to go to that blog post we'd love to have you be part of our community subscribe to our podcast subscribe to our um, YouTube channel where we talk about all things to do with global trade and not just global trade, home decor, home furnishing. And even if you're not in that industry, lots of things that we talk about still have are valid for the industry that you might be in. We'd like to thank you, our listeners who know without you, this would not be possible. And also for our technical team. Thank you all. Mm-hmm.